Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. We're here with Nate. Uh, do you prefer Nate or Nathan? I was good. I just call you both, so it's whatever. Uh, we're here with Nathan Butler, and uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about all things pod or all things acting related and entertainment industry related. So here we go. Uh, so you were just on NCIS. Uh, do you want to tell me a little bit about that? Uh, sure. Yeah. Hi, guys. Um, so, yeah, I was playing Kodiak on NCIS LA, actually. Um, there is a difference. And, yeah, it was, dude, it was fun. You know, I've been playing a lot of villains lately. And, and uh, you know, when I got that audition, I was like, this is me. This has got my name written all over it. And, uh, you know, from when I, you know, kind of, kind of created the character in the audition i uh you know i took that and then you know under, under the screen and had so much fun working with those all those actors and you know something i must say is like when i was pre preparing for that role i was preparing for it as if i was going to shoot it you know and when i did the when i did the read the performance wasn't that far away from that when i when i you know when i when I did the actual show because I, you know, I wanted to give it my all and I just, I didn't treat it as an audition. I was like, you know, tomorrow I'm shooting this job and I'm going to spend all this time on it prepping. I'm going to go through all the steps that I take to prep for a role. And I'm going to, how do much it time that. do you think that you uh, spent prepping the audition? Um, I probably spent, I don't know you know like a good it was at least a good 48 hours and not like 48 hours straight but like yeah. you know a few hours doing like you know scene analysis and then a few hours getting it on its feet and rehearsing it rehearsing it rehearsing it and i would rehearse it in all different environments from in my car to out the back to just wherever i you know because the more places you rehearse it the more places you're going to be comfortable when performing it you know when you're thrown on the spot you're ready to go. You're ready to do it there. And, you know, I would, you know, even when I was on set, you know, like I control my own destiny mm. in the sense that like, I'm not sitting in my trailer waiting for the, for the, you know, the second AD to knock on my door. I'm going out of my trailer. I'm saying, Hey, listen, can you, can you guys get me a ride to take me to set? I want to go to the set where we're shooting. I would already be in the set before everybody arrives before the other actors arrive before the directors before the crew i'm in there and i'm fucking i'm an animal and i'm inside this space and i'm like you know i'm owning all these objects in there and i'm like kind of personalizing everything in this space and then that helps me to just be the character then when they all walk in you know there's literally there's no acting that takes place there's no nerves there's no nothing i'm just fucking in it yeah and you know, that's what I call controlling your own destiny as an actor rather than I used to old Nate, you know, when I was a kid and green and like learning about it, I would, you know, I would, um, you know, yeah, I would wait in the trailer, fucking twiddling my thumbs, like <laughs> fucking nervous, you know, like clammy hands, like, man, when are they going to, and then they knock on the door and I'm like, okay, I'm ready to act. Let's go. You know, like, nah, man, it's got to, you got to take it. You got to take it into your hands and just, and just do live you, those characters. Do you feel like you stay in character while you're on set like do you feel like that helps you to um just be that person the whole time that you're there it's like a bit of a mix you know like because like, you wouldn't want to be a complete asshole to everybody if your character's an asshole you know but uh like how do you uh go between the two you know yeah it's a bit of a mix you know and there's times when i'm fully in it you know especially when you're so close to shooting it seems like the closer and closer you get to the actual camera about to roll the stakes get higher and then i start dropping in more but you know like when you're at lunch and what's that process i want to know so what's that process like for you uh like dropping in uh to character like what what goes through your head when you are dropping into character because i've seen you i've seen you do it and it's really um I don't want to say scary, but it's like impressive. It's like this, like a switch turns in your head mm. to where you're like, you're not really Nate anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I want to, I kind of want to pick that apart and see what's going through your head there. Yeah. Um, you know, look, there's a, there's the thing is, is there's a, there's a, I want to say a million that sounds, that's a lot, but there is a hmm. million things that could go through my head when I'm dropping into character. And it is basically all the homework 
that I've done and I'm juggling it around. And at this point in my career, I have learned like so many different tech acting techniques, Yeah, you know, and I have so many different pieces and like little like gems of acting gold, like, you know, tools at my disposal. And so I'm juggling them around. And then like, as I drop into character, like things will happen, you know, like, I'll, all of a sudden I'll be looking at this guy and the guy I'm talking to, he'll, he's my sister. I'm like looking in his eyes and I'm like actually talking to my little sister and I see in his eyes, he's my little sister. And then I'm mad at her. And then like, and then I'm, while that's going, I've got another fucking acting technique going in my stomach. And like, there's this fucking, you know, there's a rusty ball in my stomach that's happening. And I'm like, oh, that's awful. And then I see my sister again. And then like, so there's all these other little things that, are, and then I'm like, you know, and then I'm relating to the space I'm in. And I'm like, all of a sudden I'm in my fucking, you know, at my, at my ranch back in Australia. And I can see the fucking palm tree we had out the front. And I can see the horses riding in from far. And so while this guy is talking to me, I'm looking at the horses out in the distance. And then I look back at him and I'm like, what the fuck were you saying? And then I get back into my scene and like, so the dropping into character is like all these different fucking things and I'm juggling, which makes us look, I think, which makes us look like, like real human beings, yeah. you know, instead yeah. of just actors acting a scene it. that we had on a page. Yeah. Because it's not like people think it's easy. I mean, maybe they don't, but I think some people could take it for granted or, or, you know, think that acting's easy. And then when you try to do it, I mean, it's not, you know? Yeah. Like people see like the end result because all anybody ever sees is like, this is the performance that was edited in the cutting room floor. Like this is the perfect picture of what we wanted to show you, but they don't see like the countless takes and like, um, you know, all the, all the tries that didn't work. And um, yeah, a lot of people really, I really do think that a lot of people perceive it as easy. Whereas like, if you've ever even done it one time, you're like, there's so much shit going on in your head to like, even try to produce something that's like halfway <laughs> decent, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, it reminds me of, you know, I booked a little co-star on fucking, um, on the agents of shield oh shit and that audition was i thought was my worst audition i've ever done hmm. it was horrible dude i came in there i was like drawing on the lines i was a deer in the headlights it was like one of those moments of like oh i really fucked this up hmm. but i got it because i got they cast me in the role because the character was that like he was oh. like this nervous like you know, he was really out of sorts with what was going on. Like his, they were, they were doing as, you know, that, that season where they were in outer space and they were getting invaded by all, it was like crazy what was going on. And so Nathan just scrambling with the acting was, was right for it, you know? And like, that's the thing. Like I, I wasn't acting, like I was messing up acting. And I was thinking about a million things. I was like, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, oh, my head. And it must've looked <laughs> so weird, but they were like, you know, my, my manager calls me like, oh, by the way, you booked it. And I was like, oh, that's funny. I'm like, but no way I booked that. You know, so he's funny. like, yeah. did you have trouble like reproducing that? I don't know what I'm doing yeah. kind of on set. Because like, once I you did. like got it, you were like, oh, okay. So I can work on this. But did you have trouble? <laughs> like I had, I had a again? lot of trouble at that, at that point, you know? Mm -hmm. And then also, you know, I had other troubles too, man, because I was, I was also, um you know i was also like using you know so i was like smoking weed before i'd go on set wait how long and, ago like, was this that was when i did that was when i did ages of shield i don't know it's well, i mean i guess we can like look how up many years day. yeah yeah i mean it's years ago it's years because you're ago. like not a substance abuser whatsoever now like you don't even drink coffee no i mean i'm in i'm in aa now and in sobriety you know i um uh so yeah but that but it didn't help you know i was trying to like self-medicate and to mm. get these performances and it did not help like i was paranoid at like i don't know looking back at it looking back at the footage and the role i was like whoa dude like it was i mean it was interesting but look that's not sustainable you know yeah. at all and and it was just i think it was just dumb luck that i booked it you know sheer dumb luck that like yeah. this, 
they saw and that's a weird thing too is that they saw something else they saw an actor like maybe doing all these interesting choices mm. but it was really me just fucking scrambling and trying to just you know get the lines done so yeah damn uh so um when so you mentioned aa um how do you feel like that has um helped your life uh because i know like when you go from like drinking or whatever to not drinking sometimes like i know for me i stopped drinking pretty much um at the beginning of the year i didn't completely stop i still drink socially but i just cut it off and i know from just that choice i've been so much more focused so much more driven um just pursuing the things that i want and that's not even just in acting just in my whole life uh in every area so how do you feel like that's affected you as a person i mean it's night and day brady you know like not being sober and having that lifestyle and i'm not just talking about being sober i'm talking about being a part of aa being in a member of aa and a part of that community has changed my life is changing my life and will continue to change my life significantly and all the people around me you know it's it's profound man it's absolutely profound i'm actually i'm actually only 76 days into the program and i you know before 77 days ago i got loaded you know like i got drunk at my wife's birthday in mexico and before that date though i had nine years dry so yeah. i was completely dry for nine years without any program without nothing just on my own and it, the difference about it now with this 76 days is that like is the community is the people i'm talking to the, the friends i'm making the just everything man and then also it's it's me like connecting and talking to my higher power again you know mm. and talking to god and and i can see it's rubbing off on my family you know now my wife's count, counting days you know i have you know i have other friends who have also wanted to you know get into aa and they're, they're starting to take meetings and you know it's it's inspiring man it's being of service to other people and that's feeding my own soul to help people and it's giving me a little purpose and you know like you know, like your, your, you know, your episode, your show here is called making it, you know, like, you know, I feel like I already made it. And I feel yeah. like, I feel like a lot of that has to do with, you know, my sobriety and like to get me to this point is like, that is success, man. I'm, I'm so happy. My life is so great. Yeah. I don't have, you know, like all the big houses on the mm -hmm. hills and the cars and the boats and the, planes. I mean, you got one house, you know, I mean, got a house. yeah, got like a that's house not doing nothing. Like, yeah and like you know it's just great man it's there's so many great things about it and you know like you said like waking up you know the next day and feeling clear and getting up and meditating and and getting getting to the day you know getting oh that's that's a good one uh so i i kind of wanted to talk to you about what are your daily habits because i I've, I've been listening to like podcasts and stuff and trying to find uh, other actors and like the the resources are kind of sparse on it honestly um because i believe that daily habits and uh doing things every day towards your goal is the way to you know move toward it so uh, i'm wondering what your daily habits are in order to move you towards your goal whether that be acting or producing um because i know i just started like a pretty heavy morning routine where i it's very regimented before I go into work. Um, so I was wondering what yours is. So my daily habit is this. I get up. Um, I usually get up around five o'clock, you know, five in the morning. Sometimes earlier if I have more to do, you know, I'll get up at 4.30. But it's usually five o'clock. I make my bed. You know, my wife's already gone by then because she gets up at 4.30 and goes to the gym. Gee. She's a machine. Wow. Um, and I, you know, I get up at five and then I make the bed. And I, and I go down to the end of the bed, I get on my knees and I pray, you know, I thank God for everything. I thank him, you know, for Do you have a specific things. religion that you are. Or is it just, uh, you know, my religion uh, is my religion has been something that I've developed actually through, through uh, my sobriety too. And it's not mm -hmm. like, you know, the thing about the sobriety thing too, is like, you know, the you've got to create your own higher power. You yeah, know, yeah. God for me, isn't an old man in the sky with a beard. Yeah. And, 
and Jesus and all that. God for me is like a lot of things. It's like, it's this higher power that's, that's in control of the stuff that we're not in control of. And with that, you know, comes so much hope and like so much, like there's so much stuff that happens in our lives that we just can't control. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm, and my dad who passed away, you know, a few years back, like he's a part of my higher power. You know, so I'm talking to him. I'm talking to my ancestors. I'm talking to, I'm talking to that presence that's there. You know, and in the morning I'm thanking them, and I'm th- and I'm thanking my higher power for, for all the even all the bad shit. I'm thanking them from for the the, you know, the negative stuff and the positive stuff because it's made me who I am today. You know, and so I do that, and then I and then I get in the shower. I have a hot shower. I do like some Wim Hof. Like I have a hot, freezing cold, hot, freezing cold by then you know if i was tired i'm not now because i'm awake yeah. you know no no caffeine needed and then i do some and then i do some stretching i like roll out my legs because i have really bad you know legs and kind of body from years of punishment of basketball and rugby so i do that and then and then i get into my office you know and i get into my office and i start my daily routine of either writing you know i'm writing a tv show at the moment i'm doing either writing I'm when I'm lucky enough, I'm, I'm working on an audition and you know, I usually get, you know, I say I get my biannual audition. I get like two a year and I'm working <laughs> on that. Um, you probably have one of the highest booking ratios I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. You're like, yeah, my manager sent me uh, one audition this year and I booked yeah. it. And I'm like, yeah. holy shit, man. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, that is what it is, but uh, you know, I'm grateful for it, man. And uh, do you do any self-submitting or, um, I don't, I used used to, you know, but I kind of was like, again, you know, I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to leave it to the universe a little bit, you know, and and like, and and like I said, I'm focusing on like writing my own work and really creating my own, my own thing and my creating my own, you know, as much as I love working on other people's shows and other things, like, again, I want to create my own destiny, you know, like I want to be in control of it. Um, So, you know, so that's it. And then, you know, I love a day nap. You know, so I'll work until, you know, midday and then I love a day nap because oh, the thing I love about day naps is like, I'll do it 40 minutes and sometimes I don't fall asleep. Sometimes I'll just lie there and I'll kind of meditate and it's okay. Like as long as you close your eyes, your body's at rest, it's still getting rest. And then after that 40 minutes, even if I get 20 minutes sleep, like when I wake up, my brain is like, so like swimming in the right brain again, that it's like mm. so creative and you know, a lot of writers and artists, they, you know, they talk about the right brain a lot. And like, have, when you're in the shower, you're swimming in your right brain. I don't know if you're in the shower, you ever think you stop and think, and you're like, your imagination's crazy. It's like, you're thinking of all these crazy ideas. And, you know, I know that Aaron Sorkin, he has like a shower in his office and he's at the studio, you know? And so he like, he'll like, whenever he gets a ment- writer's block, he'll just literally step, you know, six That's feet funny. from his desk and he'll get in the shower and then like it is dude it's crazy and it's the same thing with sleep you know you dream and you like you wake up and you're like oh if there was something i was trying to write you know and trying to get down on, on the script it's like it, it'll come to me if there's something in my business that i need to figure out it'll come to me or you know so so that's my routine and then you know the kids get home from school and dinner blah blah you know bed all that and then then that's it i try to go to bed pretty early you know every night and and within that all that routine is my sobriety and i'll do meetings as as much as many as i can you know i'll sometimes do a morning i'll sometimes do a morning meeting i'll sometimes do a midday meeting and sometimes a a, you know an a a 7 p.m meeting and it can be an in-person or in zoom so what what kind of meetings are these that's for aa so i'll do okay i'll do do aa meetings i go to one in moore park which is awesome and uh you know i do i also do zoom ones and you know, it's with a lot of, you know, people who are into the industry. That's and, cool. Uh, That's like double time in it. That's and it's like cool, awesome. man. You yeah. know, I'm not saying that I'm using You can build it. relationships. Yeah, I'm not saying I'm using it to build relationships, but the relationships I am building are authentic. Yeah, because you're sharing deep stuff. Yeah, and you know these people on a deeper level and like, you know, these relationships I'm, I'm developing and, 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 you know, and get they're I love these guys, man. I love them, you know, like, so, you know, I'm, I'm super grateful for that. And I didn't, I didn't used to have that before, you know, I had very little, very little friends and now I'm starting to open up more. I'm starting to be more authentic with people. I'm starting to share. I'm starting to call people on the phone more and it's helping, man. It's helping a lot with my life. And I think it's definitely helping with my acting, you know? 
Yeah. I mean, there's no, no way it's not. Um, I mean, I think everybody needs to do that, uh, self-awareness work. Um, I know for me, um, I, I do a lot of that in the morning with my morning routine. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of like morning pages. Mm -mm. Have you heard of that? So, um, it's basically recommended, you know, I'm a big reader. So, um, uh, from Julia Cameron, what's that? What's the book called? G uh, artist way. That's what the book's called. And she only has two tools and that's, uh, walking and doing morning pages. And so basically all you're doing is stream of consciousness writing. You do three pages. It could be vulgar. It could be horrible. It can be insightful, but really you're just letting your hand flow. And what that kind of does is just get all the brain funk out onto a page. So that way you can live the rest of the day kind of like as yourself. Uh, cause there's so many things that we just carry around as kind of like a cloud in our head mm. that keeps us from, I feel like really living. Um, yeah. so it, it really silences that sensor of the thing that keeps you from going after those things that you want, you know, because, um, I don't know about you, but um, before I was doing this, I was really second guessing a lot of the stuff I did. Um, like I always wanted to start a podcast doing it now. Um, I was putting off my headshots did that today, you know, and it, there's so many just little things where it was like, my head was so loud that I wasn't even able to do the simplest tasks. You know, it was like, go to work, go home. Uh, and then the acting career will like take care of itself, but it's like, you know, I found that it wasn't taking care of itself. So I had to, you know, do that. So I've been writing, I've been um, trying to produce a couple of projects and just really doing everything I can to go after those goals, you know, because this is a weird life, um, pursuing a, a career in the arts in any art form. Um, and it's like, if we have our own self, shutting us down let alone the rest of the world shutting us down it's like we'll never even move toward that you know so i mean it's brady it's an extraordinary life that we get to have yeah and it's so unique and we're so we're so lucky to have it because yeah. all this stuff that you're saying dude like we get to be so self-aware and we get to express how we feel you know how like so, how many people don't get to do that and live their whole life without doing any of that you know and yeah. like you're and we're aware of it and we're cognizant of it and you're like you're like doing this stuff to like better yourself you're like we're doing this stuff to to be to be better people yeah. you know and it's something that you said reminded me of this meeting I, I just did before we jumped on i i just got out of a meeting and this guy said you know I, I get to god before my head gets to me and that's like in the morning you know you get you get to your ritual and you get to your thing before your head gets the better of your your day you know and, that's and i do like, a lot of praying in mind too like a lot of it is like you know getting all your thoughts out but it's also like dear god blah 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 like you're you know yeah. asking for the things that you can't control it's not like oh i want a million dollars it's like give me strength today to just get through my day you know stuff like that where it's just like you know the put circumstances in my life that give me opportunities it's like i don't want you to give me things, but give me opportunities, you know, this, right. it's just the shit that you can't control on your own. It's like, you need that, that spark. I feel like, um, to get yeah. you through. Yeah, man. There's something also uh, this, this director told me once she's a writer director, but she told me, she was talking about, um, every morning she gets up and writes her dreams down, you know, if you can do it. Cause sometimes you don't have dreams or when you wake up, that were too far. I don't away dream. Yet. I like don't dream at all at all ever it's not possible dude. i just don't i don't know i don't like i i don't know what it is you're an alien then you must like, be an alien <laughs> <laughs> i dream like um uh, i don't know i'll have like a flash of a dream and that's about it like it's literally like just one image and then it's like all right cool i'm waking up and then i just don't think about it for the rest of the day i wonder what that is dude maybe sleep that's so, that i don't know <laughs> You have sleep apnea? You don't sleep I don't well? know. I don't know. I snore, so I probably do. I need that's, to get that fixed. That's so interesting, man. I get good yeah. sleep, though. Like, I feel, I wake up, 
feeling dude, rested? I'm, but I'm, dude, I'm glad you did your headshots today, though, man, because this look, I'm telling you, man, this is your look. She you almost know? didn't want to shoot it. Really? She was like, oh, yeah, you're going to have to pay an extra blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay, I guess I'm going to pay then because I need clean shaven look. Like, because I, I, I like walking around with a beard in real life because I feel like it ages me up and it gives me a little more respect, you know. Um, but I like having the option of being able to shave and people knowing what I look like when I'm clean shaven. So, yeah, at the end, we, we'd taken all these photos with all these different looks and she was like, okay, great. And I was like, I, I need those photos. Like we, we have to do this, <laughs> you know? It's your and look, so, man. Like, you know, I've been trying, I've been trying to say it to you for ages, but it's your look, you know, like, this is you, man. Like, I, I you know, I'm, I'm going to cast this guy. Like yeah. this is, you know, I did have it trimmed up recently though, the beard and uh, the headshots look really good. They look better than I usually walk around in. So, okay. The the beard looked better in my headshots than it does in real life, thankfully. So uh I am definitely going to be submitting clean shaven though. Um yeah. because I, I do think that you're right about it being a little more castable. And my manager's been telling me also, like, hey, you you know, you can be so young with the, the beard. It's a on. sign, man. You can be so young and you gotta play into that, you know? The fact that you can you know, you can play super young, but you're not. I mean, that's a huge asset, you know? Yeah, you're right. You got to use that. So what are you producing now? Do you want to talk about it or do you want to just, you know, let it happen when it happens? Um, yeah, no, we can talk about it. You know, I'm, I'm actually producing a, which. Because I know you've been working on it a while. So yeah, I just I mean, want to give you an opportunity to talk about it. Yeah. And also, yeah, and also I produced a, a, you're talking about the TV show I've been, I've been, I've been writing for a while, but, uh, you know, I also produced a commercial over, you know, a weekend ago, which I've been working on for a while too, which, you know, you were, that you also worked on and, you know, that was fun to be working on like a, you know, like a proper scale, you know, commercial to be directing and, you know, it's like, I've been in this town now, like 13 years and, you know, this producer came up to me at that shoot and he said something to me that really like it really dropped in man you know and he said he said nathan man you you know you've been here you've been in la for what 10 you know 11 years and i'm like 13 and he's like dude you're so many people respect you and look up to you yeah and and look at you you're directing like all these people you're directing this commercial and you're like he just said this stuff dude that was so i mean it was so beautiful of him to say that and it just made me realize that you know my like i have this creative energy and i have like such a like i don't want to blow smoke up my ass but i have such a good spirit and i'm able to bring like the best out of people i'm able to like get people and make them like shine you know and I mean, I know that just from our auditions together, because like when I film in my office, I always feel so stiff. But when I come to your house to like do the auditions, you get this like energy out of me and put me into the scene a lot more. Uh, so I can definitely relate to what you're saying. You know, thank you, man. And, look, and, you know, and it's from not only from the actors, but it's from the actors all the way down to the, the PAs, you know, like I'm able to make people like want to be better people, you know, I want to be do like do their best work, you know, and. And so I want to take that. I want to take that energy that I've learned and this knowledge that I've, you know, that I've, that I've now, you know, that I have and take it to Australia. And I want to take it to Australia. I want to make a TV show. And that TV show is, is called Far North. And it's based on my, you know, kind of my grandma's like history. My grandma was like the matriarch of our family and she led her sons and, you know, a whole bunch of wild bush rangers she led them to steal a bunch of cattle and hmm. you know they had a crazy life like my i grew up in you know what's considered as kind of like the wild west of australia i grew up in a place called the devil's triangle and it's where all these cattle ranchers were and you know my family were wild man that was they were they were wild cowboys they were bush rangers and cowboys and it was you know it was an amazing childhood and you know, and, and all the stories, man, that I, that I, you know, 
accumulated along the way from my uncles and cousins and family. You know, I, I kind of wrote them all down and I got them into this story. And before my dad passed away, I spent so much time with him and he told me all these stories and stories you would not like, you have to see to believe, you yeah. know? And, and so I've written this six hour, like what the six hour mini series. So there's six, six episodes, six, one hour um, episodes. And uh, you know, I think it's going to be great, dude. It's like Yellowstone kind of meets Picky Blinders, but set in the Australian outback, you know? So I really... I'm sold. Dude, I'm... That I'm sounds gonna... awesome. Yeah, I, man. To, I love the movie Australia also. Like, even just the outback just by itself is just it's odd, gonna be, oddly it's, stark and beautiful. It's going to be fucking awesome. And all my family still live out there, you know? So we're going to be out there on horses and... Oh, yeah, you, you know, still have places out there you can go. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to be working with cattle and shooting horses and cattle, you know, like filming horses and cattle. And, you know, I really want to get out there and create, you know, this world for this show. And then, and then just, and then after that, I want to keep creating. I want to keep creating, whether it's a comedy, whether it's a thriller or a sci I want to use that world out there because it's so beautiful. The landscape is like, dude, it's where I grew up. And it's like, it hasn't really been seen on TV and film that much. Yeah. If any especially far north queensland where i'm from so i want to go there and kind of share that with the world you know and that's what i'm going to do that's going to be cool yeah because i know you've been working really hard on that one i saw that even that the way you have it bound in that that book is like yeah is that is that for a pitch or something to like go get uh <laughs> financing oh yeah show it you can't see this on the on the podcast but you can see it on the um on the youtube on the youtube yeah yeah that's sick that's, that's it awesome you know so that's it that the show is called far north i the guarantee you netflix would pick that up far north the devil's triangle and here's the name here's our cattle property bloodwood downs wow and uh how'd yeah, you have that made actually i actually made it myself i designed it like what the whole the design heck? and then i and then i had a, a friend who's an indian guy to do all the the leather work you know wow. and so what I'm doing is I'm going to print all the scripts in there and the, and the, and the, uh, the treatment. And then, yeah, that's what I, you know, that's what I hand off to, you know, all the big wigs and, um, you know, I don't think any, uh, how close are you to like going and pitching it? Super close. I'm yeah, so excited, man. I've been working on it for years and I'm finally, I'm like, you know, I'm weeks away from printing these and putting them in there to that leather journal and then from there it's off to the races you know it's pitching it's getting people on board it's finding the right people to champion it you know and i have a few people in mind that i've been kind of grooming the last few years and so i'm gonna go for it man and you know i'm not gonna rest until that thing's made you know yeah i mean that's the attitude right yeah uh, how was the pandemic for you? That's a big topic. The pandemic was... Uh, yeah. I mean, did you was, get any work during the pandemic or was it like you just had to scrap for it? Pandemic for me was... It was it was kind of less about work and more about spiritual enlightenment. Mm. That's what happened to me during the pandemic, which I'm so grateful for. You know, like you know, my hair happened in the pandemic. Hmm. That was one thing. The hair and beard happened in the pandemic. Oh yeah. Um, you were super clean shaven. Yeah, dude. Like you I had looked, the short yeah. hair and no beard. Not, not as handsome as you, but I was very like, Stop. yeah, Stop. I was very, yeah, I was very clean. And, and, you know, look, I just, I started becoming the characters in this show I was writing, Yeah. you know, and it was fun. I enjoyed it. Like literally I got into this routine. You're talking about routine. I really, in the pandemic, I hit this routine. I'm like, I just got to do 28 days of getting up at, you know, 5am and then it'll become my norm. And then I just, you know, I just kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And I kept writing every morning and I, you know, look, I can't call myself a writer, but I think I could probably call myself a writer now after writing, you know, uh, you know, a near 600, you know, page. Well, you know, yeah, almost 600 pages of script you know i can almost call myself a writer now and just doing it the practice of doing it every morning and every day and just you know just churning out you know pages and pages and then going back and doing rewrites and going back and drafting and whatever um 
so the pandemic was really you know and in doing that i'm like i'm researching my family's history i'm like you know i'm getting in touch with my you know all my ancestry and it was it was really it was really special for me that pandemic and also and also the connection with my family like all of a sudden having to spend time with my wife and kids that you know before it was like we go to work they go to school and then we come home and like we hardly see each other we see each other yeah. on the weekends and like having all that time was at first like challenging but then it was like it was so beautiful we got to be with each other and love love and live with each other you know so much more deeply than than we were before that so it was you know look for all the darkness and everything around the pandemic and all that happened and obviously you know like a lot of people lost their lives and it was horrible and whatever but we just kind of bunkered down and just got you know got shit done and and you know again a chance for me to look inward you know to look inward and, and figure out who i am and i think that's a big thing brady with acting is like like who you are you know and it takes a while to figure it out and once you figured it out that's when you start you know you like you stop acting i'm like who are you dude who am i and i'm this guy who grew up in far north queensland in the outback on this cattle cattle ranch that's who i am yeah and i can't I can't get away from that. That's me. And like, so, and then this, all this grew out and it's like, you know, hmm. during the pandemic, I figured out who I am. And then that's reflecting in my acting. It's reflecting in my roles. And like, you know, they're either going to love it or hate it. I'm going to give them that, you know? So yeah. That's it. That, that was my pandemic, man. What was, tell me about yours. Uh, I mean, I just basically, so this is, you know, um, one of the things that I think actors, me included, I used to struggle with the idea of like getting a real job, you know, and uh, for a long time, my first couple of years, I was really broke in L.A. Um, I arrived in my car. Uh, I used to sleep in my car next to the beach, you know, before I found a spot and I actually got on this little short film and uh, one guy, uh, his name is Lance. Shout out, Lance. Uh, thanks, buddy. Uh, he let me sleep on his couch for 500 bucks a month for a couple of months. Man, and uh, that's awesome. Yeah, it was just by happen chance. I contacted the only three people I knew in L.A. Um, and one of them was on a film, got me on the film, and I found a house through that. And I was literally sleeping out of my car before that. Um, so that's a side tangent. But yeah, before then, I was like, oh, no, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an actor. Like, I'm going to be, you know... Uh, it's it's only acting for me and i used to do like catering and serving and whatever and um you know christian got me on to basically doing carpet cleaning uh, yeah and so i was finally able to to be stable and pay my bills and stuff and you know get a decent place to live instead of just one of those like cater waiter kind of places where you're paying like 700 bucks a month to live there. Um, and so, yeah, the, just basically during the pandemic, I was working and I was, you know, I was really fortunate to have a job, um, and to be able to do that. And that's basically all I did. But if I, if I didn't have that job, I, you know, I, I wouldn't have yeah. been able well, to. Well, yeah. And a live. lot of people didn't have jobs. A lot of yeah. people like, you know, they lost their jobs and, it was crazy, man. It was a crazy time. And that's, dude, that's great that you were fortunate enough to, you know, to, to keep working. So, uh, one of my friends, uh, do you know, you know, Spencer? Yeah. Right? Okay. So Spencer, uh, we were talking about this today. Um, and I, I don't know if you find this to be true, but I find it to be true. Uh, he, he always says that when he does a really good audition, he always has something more interesting to do after the audition. Hmm. It's one of those things where you walk it in and all you're thinking about, if all that you're thinking about is the audition, usually those are the ones you just bomb, mm -hmm. you know, because you're so in your head, you're just thinking about it. But whereas it's like, oh, I'm going to go meet with my friends after this. Oh, or, oh, I'm going to go uh, to a party after this even, you know, or I got some important meeting with, uh, with another director after this. Uh, I don't know how, how true you find that, but um, 
what do you think about that for actors um yeah i don't know you know there's a lot of there's a lot of like myths and legends right and, and uh uh what do you call them like yeah just all those like you know all those quirky things that actors have around their auditions i feel like when you book a flight you know to go somewhere you like you know you'll always book something before you go on that flight or yeah mm. yeah when you're going on a vacation or it's the same thing like when you're going somewhere somewhere and i guess it's probably it's it's got to have something to do with your exactly like what's going on in here you know and wh- whatever that is i i definitely know that um you know that energy of like being desperate and really wanting that job is not a very attractive energy to have it's not very castable where it, unless the character is desperate and really needs yeah. a job you know but i feel like so i feel like the energy is is you know and i had this great great acting teacher because the thing is is you can fake that energy yeah you know you're not only ever going to book that role when you haven't you know you're having a great you you're, you you've got in a, a meeting after that audition with an amazing director and so you're like i'm really excited about this meeting so i'm going to get this audition done you can fake that energy yeah you know and this i had this great acting teacher who told me that it's literally like with your feet you if you're on your the balls of your feet on your toes almost it's like you're leaning in and you're a little bit too desperate but if you just lean back and you and you do the scene all of a sudden then on your heels it's like you have that you have that same so you can fake it like i just gotta lean yeah. back and then fake that fake that energy and then all of a sudden i'm not desperate i'm not like oh trying to trying to do the scene and try. like dude it really comes down i think just great acting just really comes down to homework you know yeah you gotta do the work that's what's, it what's your like technique like based on like if you could give like a simple breakdown of what your technique is Cause I know, cause for me, it's like, I like to ask a lot of questions and that's something pretty recent that I've done. Like, Oh, who is this guy? Who is it to him? Uh, what does he want in the scene? Uh, you know, uh, where are we in the space? Uh, how does he feel about this? What is he, uh, how long has he known this person? Uh, what's something that from their, you know, past that would affect this scene? You know, like just just asking tons and tons of questions so what what is your um main method consist of the main thing for me and i don't even main... need answers to the questions like just asking the no, question yeah gets it yeah sparked, no, that's, you know? that's great that's great that's all great you know questions are really great maybe that's something i don't do enough is ask more questions i kind of just instead of i kind of just make a lot of stuff up around the characters like past and really one of the great one of the biggest thing is substitution for me and yeah, finding, talk about that that's one of the that's huge if you can figure out who you're talking to in that scene it can it can change it so much and the thing great thing about it is there is no right or wrong you know i had this other great director tell me once like they you know he was he was casting for a role and he cast the person that was completely wrong for the role but they just made really interesting choices, completely wrong, yeah. you know, made interesting choices. And then they know this is an actor we can work with and, and direct, you know, and yeah, the character he ended up, you know, doing on the show is completely fucking different from the audition. But like, and, and in saying that I'm saying like, you gotta, you gotta like make a choice with this substitution and substitution means who are you talking to in the scene? You know, so if the scene is with, you know, Jack and Jill, I'm Jack and there's Jill. I'm not talking to Jill, you know, Jill. And she's got a character breakdown and I read her character breakdown and I'm like, who is Jill for me? Yeah. And so, you know, I can make her my sister, which is my, in real life I'm talking about. So, so in real life, all of a sudden Jill is now Chloe or Clesty, my oldest. Like I'm talking to, all of a sudden now I'm talking to a real person you know, and then choosing that substitution is really important because then you can change it, you Mm. know, you can change it and that makes it interesting and you can make it, you know, just say I'm supposed to be talking to Jill who's, who's, you know, my love interest. 
then all of a sudden I make it, you know, I make it my dad or I make it my, you know, or I make it my dog or I make it, you start making it a different substitution. It changes the scene completely, you know? And often I choose a substitution. I choose a person that is going to make the scene harder for me to, 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 to kind of accomplish. So my scene objective, it makes it harder for me to get that scene objective which whatever I want in the scene. And that brings me to the next point of it, which is really important is what do you want? You know, again, you're asking these questions. I think the main question in any, in any of the, you know, with acting is what do you want? Yeah. What do you want Yeah. from, from that scene? What do you want from that person? What do you want to get at that end of the scene? What do you want? What do you want? And then go get it, you know? Yeah. And I don't know, to me, making the choices is the hardest thing because you know you doubt yourself and you're like all oh, this and that comes in but i think the most important thing is like it has to it has to like it has to like kind of create a fire in you you know and the fire doesn't have to make you like fucking super excited or jumping out of your skin it can make you like smolder and like get dark and get subtle too it just has to fucking do something it has to move you so the choices you make, and then, you know, I just, I spoke about two, you know, things there. And I, again, I do, there's so many that I juggle, you know, and it's making those choices. It's like, how is this forwarding the scene? And how is it, you know, what is it, what is it doing to me that makes it there? And like, you know, when I work with actors and they're, you know, we're, we're working auditions and, you know, I help, I help a lot of friends do their scenes and stuff. You know, I'm, I'm seeing an actor who does has a lot of the time I'm seeing an actor, I'm seeing a lazy actor who hasn't done the homework and they're delivering the, the scene to me straight directly at me, straight to the camera, not to the camera, but straight to the actor after the camera. And they're just delivering the scene straight. They never look away all the way through the scene. And it's just, it's not a real person, Yeah, you know? There's no, there's no dynamic. That's there's... something that I've really been working on with auditions. Cause if I'm on set, like all the shits around you and you can kind of just like, okay, that's there. Like you, you, you really just live in that world, but you know, in an audition, you're just in that room. So it's like something that I've been working on is getting like out of my head. Like I went yeah. back and rewatched like all of my old auditions and it's like what you're saying exactly is like, I really used to struggle with fucking locking eye contact and just going through the scene, you know? Yeah. And like, you know, you'll see that, you know, with that NCIS audition, you know? Yeah. You were like, so alive. You'll see that with playing, you know, you watch, you watch that just earlier in this, earlier in this episode. And like, let me get a piece of paper here and I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you. So in that scene, I created a character and you know he was a he was a very dark character right but in my mind i'm i was a hero yeah you know i'm i wasn't a villain i'm a fucking hero of my story and so my character was very dark because his dad and i created this story just completely from scratch you know it wasn't in the script it was nothing i got the sides and these scenes and then i created the rest and it was i created the story the backstory and this is, you know, something else I do with every character is I create a very rich backstory. And I created a story of that his dad was, was, he was a pilot and he was flying, you know, he was doing flights like commercial flights and cargo flights from Mexico to America. And he ended up getting killed by the Mexican cartel who were doing this, you know, who were doing drug runs and he was asked to be their pilot and pay a lot of money and he died anyway. So I created all this story. And, and that every, wasn't in the script at all. Not at all okay cool not at all i mean it was in the script that like i was somehow affiliated with the cartel and i was killing them off so i had to create this story it's like why to make you a good guy again why the questions you know again like why is this guy doing this and and i created a story of this is why he's doing it you know mm -hmm. he's killing off all these mexicans because wait hold on how do you personalize that because that's the backstory so how do you yeah. get to personalizing that so so i'll get to that and, yeah yeah okay and, continue sorry yeah no that and that's a it's a really fucking great question and so you know and so i got every day this guy my character he made a paper airplane 
and it was the plane that my dad got killed in right and i made that plane and on it was i you know i had i had a written you know some some kind of poetry that my dad you know like a like a saying he would say to me you know and i would make this paper airplane and i would and i would do it every day and i it, and it would be on me on it would be on my person all the time i would have these airplanes and then so in the scenes dude where i'm you know where you can you know I'm, we're talking about really heavy shit we're talking about killing people and doing this and that and running drugs and you know like we're talking about really heavy subject matters and whatever and i'm just almost like a child i'm making a paper airplane while i'm talking about this and i'm doing this in the scene you know the whole time and i did it in the audition and then i did it in the day on the day on the you know when we shot it and I, we can we can play it i can play it right now if you want we can play that i scene. might do uh the audition and then put the scene right after it yeah like there you go. i might do that i'm i'm gonna try mess around with the editing but yeah we'll see yeah so you know you'll see that you'll see that and you know and i did it and they loved it they were like dude, they loved it because it was a choice they're like look at this guy man he's like making this you know they have no idea what's going on but it's so interesting when you watch someone do something just do something i'm not sitting there looking at the other actor going yeah okay yeah no yeah yeah i'm here fuck i'm being i can see my dad i'm talking to him through this paper airplane i'm like i'm making this thing i'm you know i'm really living this moment i can see him crashing that plane over and over again i'm like living that moment and then you know and then you got to talk about you know personalizing how do i personalize like justifying like killing people right yeah how do i do that stuff you know and that's you know, that's, that comes with that. I, I choose a moment where someone and someone pissed me off so much that I wanted to kill him. And I often use this, this, this one incident that happened to me uh, when I was in, it was actually when I was in drama school and I was in drama school. And I think I was in, I believe I was in third year and it was a first year. So I was a senior. It was a freshman. We were at a party and you know, all the actors are there and whatever. And I'm just, I'm on, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm there, you know, with everyone hanging out. We're kind of outside on the curb and we're drinking, having a good time. And I'm sitting there and all of a sudden I got, I get knocked out. Boom. And I'm out cold. Right. I get up. I have no idea what's going on. I just got sucker punched and I, and I, I come to, and here's this guy, this first year actor, he's shirt off, He's dancing around the middle of the street. Come on, fucking everyone, like, come find me. You know, he, this guy is apparently he had a real bad problem with fucking, I don't know, math or whatever. He was on drugs and he was like out of his mind. And I come to learn that he's not only knocked me out, but he's also knocked out <laughs> two, like two, two girls at the party. Oh, two girls, shit. like just fucking, like just punched through their, <laughs> anyway Funny. so here i am and like up. at this time like i was you know again i'm not like big noting but i'm like you know i'm 20 i'm 20 years old i'm like dude i'm in fighting shape i'm like fit you know i'm the gym every day i'm like you know i'm a big guy and i'm like and and also i used to be a boxer you know and i had i had a bunch of i had 11 fights and so he's chose to hit me you know of all people of the party he chose to he, he chooses to hit a guy who used to be a boxer, you know, I was runner up golden gloves boxer. Like anyway, so my ego is just like, my blood just goes. And here I am. I get this guy, right. And I'm, and I grab him and I drag him and I'm holding him by this car. And I'm about to throw this guy through the car window. And my friend stops me, this big American guy who was in our, who was in our um, year at NIDA in my inner drama school this big african-american guy right he grabs me and he's like yo nate he's like nah dog i'm like he's like don't do it and like he pulls me back and we like break it off but like that moment brady that's how i can kill people i personalize seeing that motherfucker dancing in the street like a lunatic i can picture him hitting those girls i can picture him what he did to me dude and i just want to i'm gonna kill him and so when I picture that dude, I don't have to act. I wanted to fucking kill that in that moment. I wanted to yeah. end that guy's life, you know? <clears throat> and so I bring up moments like that. And that's not the only moment that's happened to me in my life. I have other moments that have, 
you know, I wanted to kill someone. And so then, then I get to use my imagination and I get to go, I get to go, <clears throat> what if I actually did kill him? How would I feel? And then I kill him in my imagination. And then that's the magic. What if, you know, what if I did it? And then I, and then I get to do that. And then I, and then how, and that's awesome thing about acting is I get to do that without actually killing someone. And then I get to feel like, Oh my God, I killed that guy. Holy shit. And then this whole fucking, you know, then something else starts coming on. And like, you know, it's fun, dude. And that's the beautiful thing that we get to create, you know. And then that's that goes with the substitution, substitutions you choose, and those people you choose are in that scene with you. You get to have affairs on your wife, you know, or your partner yeah. in your imagination. It's like, yeah. yeah, there's this chick that I really want to have a, you know, an affair with. And you get to do that in your imagination, in that scene, you get to play it out and you're like, ah, oh, that was awesome. And like, that's acting. That's what you get to do, you know? So yeah, man, there's, there's, uh, you know, I love it all. I love all those roles. I'm like, throw it at me. Those, those villain roles are fun. You know, you get to really dig deep. Yeah. I am not good yet at, being the bad guy and i that's something that i'm it really need to work on because i i think in the this modern era i could i could play a really good bad guy if i learned how to harness that type of energy because i could play like the good guy that you don't expect to be sure just fucked up person who's just going around killing people or like you know the psychopath so i need that's that's one of those things that i'm working on is just flipping that switch of just like <clears throat> yeah murder you know and again like i want you know there's so many great performances of that of that brady you know that you can watch and i think you should be watching and like that and then when you start watching it and picking it apart like being you know being analytical with it and looking at it going like what is that actor thinking right now when he's doing this scene yeah and then, i always think that that's it's always like how what the like euphoria have you seen the new uh the new season of euphoria i haven't seen it all right well the, there was a moment where rue she's like the main character um she goes on this tirade and she like almost cuts her mom with a piece of glass and it's like spoiler alert sorry about that but um yeah she she just did this like 10 minute tirade monologue through the episode and i was like how the fuck did she do that and they had many different shots it wasn't just like one angle it was like every angle was lit like she must have had to do it like eight times unless they were just hiding the cameras like that that yeah all that is like how did they do that because it's Mm. like did the glass actually break was it um like that the suspension of disbelief is so high on scenes like that because it's like was that an actual piece of glass it's like Mm -hmm. i i know it probably wasn't but like how did she get to that level like she's like teared up snot coming down looking nasty the whole time and it's just like how do you do that and again you know like i i i I don't know what she did but i imagine she used personalization and if she didn't have something strong enough like, you know, if her dog didn't bring her to that, if her dead, dead dog or dead grandma didn't bring her to that breakdown point, then she used a magic if. What if, you know, she had lost her, you know, boyfriend? What if she had lost her mom? What if? And then you start creating these situations and then you get yourself to that boiling point of just going, you know, going crazy. I love that, dude. Like when yeah. I've had those moments, like doing, you know, when I've been grateful enough to have those moments of acting where I get to do that, man, whether it's a play or TV or film like that's, or even being in acting class, I remember doing that, you know, like getting in, having that moment of just losing it, Mm -hmm. you know, and everyone was just like, holy shit, what did he just do? You know? And I don't know what I did, but it's like, because it just, whatever happened, it just dropped in. And then all of a sudden I was there and I was, and you just lose it, you know? And then you see actors do it and it's great, dude. It's fucking, you know, obviously she does it 
and it's brilliant you see it and you're like oh it's amazing it's like how did they do it it's like you know it's magical it's magic that's what, that's what it is it's, <laughs> yeah. mag it's magical it's those you know? moments of like pure magic yeah but it's a risk that's the thing too it's a risk brady yeah you gotta risk it for the biscuit dude you got it <laughs> You yeah. got to take risks, you know, that's what, that's what's entertaining, you know, it's what it's are you, not... okay. So here's a question. This just popped into my head. Um, what are your thoughts on like acting class? Like, um, how do you feel about it? You know, what's the, yeah. Cause I, I feel like I'm at a stage in my career where I, I still haven't quite mastered my technique. Like I know what my technique is. I have a very simple steps but I just feel like I haven't quite practiced enough. Right. Um, and experimented enough and tried enough things out. So, but I feel like you, you went to conservatory, uh, you did all the stuff, um, that you're like, you know, supposed to do, but how do you feel about going now and ongoing classes? Um, you know, I, I've done, I've done, I feel like I've done almost all the ongoing classes in LA. Yeah. <laughs> Almost all of them, you know. I mean, there's a there's a few that I haven't, but you know, and I love them all, man. I think they're all very useful. But then, you know, I can almost go back and say I was a better actor when I was 17 when I didn't know. I feel like that too. I really Anything. feel like when I first started, I just knew objective, and that's all I knew. Yeah, that was the only thing I was thinking about. And I go back and watch some of my old tapes. I could like cry in auditions like but like realistic tears not just like oh it's like you know he did that on purpose he triggered himself it's like no it was like really just going after what i wanted and that's all i knew dude when i was i was 17 and i auditioned for the national institute of dramatic art right and i remember being at this audition with you know a thousand other people just in my town and and dude i was I was just an animal. It was so primal. I was 17. I was doing like, you know, I had to do three, like three, you know, almost like three minute monologues. And, you know, I remember doing, I was doing Peter Schaefer's monologue, uh, Equus, you know, where the young 17 year old guy like he masturbates. The, yeah. He, he kills the horse. Yeah. He masturbates. He gets off on the horse like naked. Right. And I'm doing this scene, dude, as a 17 year old, no nerves, nothing in front of all these people. I'm just going fucking crazy on this you know on this stage and i just remember doing it and just being like i was so free dude mm -hmm. i was so like i had no like oh i wonder what he's thinking like oh all this yeah stuff. yeah i was dude it was amazing like it was and and then after doing the conservatory and like doing all these acting classes and everything now i know so much that like when something happens and I see it and I see mistakes and I just, you just start to see, it's like seeing the matrix. You start to mm. see all of it. And this is what I'll say about it all is that fuck it. None of it fucking matters. Let it at the end of the day, you got to let it all go, mm. let it all go. Because when you get on set and when you get finally there and you got that director in front of you, and you're doing all this business and other stuff none of it matters like it not it, and that's a it's a maybe a you know maybe i'm like contradicting myself or something but it's like it's like none of it matters and all of it matters so it's like you know i i, I believe doing the work helps i believe rehearsing helps i believe you should do it and you should work your ass off as an actor just like other people work hard in every job but then when you get to do the performance, which is like the icing on the cake, just fucking let it go. Hmm. And whatever homework you did and whatever happens, happens. And then don't judge yourself. That's what we do, I think, as actors. So, you know, we're so bad at is that like after something we think it's, but we're like, oh, we apologize for ourselves. Like, fuck, I'm sorry. That was shit. Or like, I say, don't do that. You know, just fucking enjoy it. Let it go. And what will be, what will be. So you used to be a series regular, right? Yep. Uh, what show? I don't remember. General Hospital. Yeah, General Hospital. So what, like that is a lot of work. Like being a soap opera actor, like I genuinely think it's probably harder than any other job. And I don't think it gets even 
the amount of respect that it should because you see the res- most people see the result and they're just like oh they're bad actors but it's like they don't understand the amount of pressure that the actors yeah. are under to even be halfway decent so what when you were doing that was your major lessons because i i with, with most thing most things in my life i feel like i only take away like a couple of like major things um but what are those like gems that you took away from that experience um it was a it was a very valuable lesson in in definitely learning lines definitely valuable yeah. lesson in learning yeah. learning a lot of material um you know when i started on the show we were doing an episode a day which is a 45 minute episode every day and then half the way through like i think after one year into the show then um then we start they cut the budgets on soaps and then we were doing two 45 minute episodes a day so an hour and a half of content a day wow and so so you know look a lot of bad acting is definitely is definitely seen on those shows because uh, um also you know that you just don't have time i mean how many takes do you get per so i mean two if you're lucky Hmm. you know two if you're lucky they're shooting on multiple cameras so there's you know there's two there's two wides and two closes like there's you know there's five four five cameramen shooting it so it's like live and they're cutting it live there's someone up in the this edit suite and they're and they're editing live they're literally going like camera one to five to three to four they're editing as you're as they're shooting it wow. and then pretty much what they edit it, it goes to you know it goes to air so you know look you learn you i kind of learned you learn a little some tricks and things to like get you through it you know like when you're you know i just say you're halfway through a scene and you don't like what's going on if you let that scene finish and you're doing shit mediocre acting and you're like not dropped into the character and you the scene finishes they go print moving on and you're gone that's it done and that shitty scene will be forever in the universe for everyone to see whereas you know as i got a little bit into the season and started you know was getting used to it you'll be doing the scene right? you'll be you'll be talking 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 like yeah this is happening this is happening and then you realize that you're fucking the scene up in the middle of the scene you're conscious of yourself fucking up the scene and then i would literally look right down in the camera like i about like barrel of the lens and just go i'm so sorry i fucked that up and then they can't use that tape they'd be right? like ah oh, come on oh. so they gotta go back like so from like, the top no. and you're like i'm sorry guys sorry <laughs> Yeah. you know so you like start to learn a little bit of the you know like little tricks to do but dude it was just it's a lot of content it's yeah. a lot of, it's a lot of dialogue and yeah it's I, you know you got to give them credit you got to give those guys credit you know because the acting that is good on the show those guys have been on it for a long time and even the young people who are coming in you know there's been a lot of great actors who started in the soap world a lot of amazing actors who started and you know they went on to be amazing writers and directors and everything you know and it is a it is really a good school of hard knocks you know it's like get in and go you yeah. know like go and it's and it's high pressure it's very high pressure i was you know my first you know like couple months under the show i was shitting myself dude you know i was literally shitting myself it was scary it was scary it blows my people. mind how fast you memorize lines like, I remember you sent me that eight minute monologue and you got it like the day before I was, and you had to do, uh, the language that you invented. Like that is insane oh. to me. I don't think you're allowed to yeah. talk about that, but for that, we'll, we'll just say it's a Disney, like a Disney, you know, kind of like Mandalorian type show. Um, yeah, dude, that was, you know, that that's crazy stuff. You sent it but... to me and I was like, how the hell? Did yeah, you that's one, one get crazy. it down and then have some? <laughs> that's that's one of the you had so movies. many interesting actions with it. I was like, how did you come up with that? That's one of the craziest auditions I've ever done, dude. But that probably came from you know so soap opera work, just learning the being able to learn quickly. Yeah, sure being able muscle. to learn, being able to learn quickly. You know, I think I've told you this before. You know, I like to learn the scene like 
you know, chronologically. And then I learn it backwards, which is weird, but like I'll learn it and not like backwards, like each word, but like each thought backwards or each sentence. So like I'll learn the moment before the last sentence and then the moment before that I'll learn like, so if your if your line before that was like, you know, you got to remember to bring me that. I'll, I'll kind of remember your line is you got to remember to bring me that. And then what that line follows that. So I'll learn it backwards in each little oh. block. And then for some reason, once I've learned it backwards, I can forwards is easy. And that comes, to, that comes with music. Actually, that comes from my music background is like mm. learning a song. When you, once you learn that, like learning a song backwards and the lyrics, you, it's easy, much easier to sing it through forwards. So and I think, you know, I try is, that. That's an interesting tool. I to think use. acting is very, acting is very similar to music. You know, it's like a song and you got to, you got to get through that poetry and like that scene, you like that, you know, that audition I did where I had to make up my own language. It was very similar where I just learned it like a song and, you know, then you just sing it, you know? Yeah. That's yeah. really interesting that I'm, I'm, I'm going to experiment with that on my next audition. I didn't, I didn't even think of that. Honestly, here's a big one. Uh, I'll, I'll probably wrap it up here. Uh, but I just wanted to ask you one last question. Um, what's something that if you could go back in time and get yourself to understand something, what's something that you would go back and tell yourself, tell yourself to maybe move the process forward a little bit quicker? Not saying regrets or anything, but like, what are some things that you would tell yourself to try to get you to understand? And this is taken straight from Audrey Helps Actors podcast. So if it sounds similar, that's what that is. But this is one of my favorite questions she asked. So what would that be? Say so to ask it again. If you could go back and get your younger self to understand something about the industry, what would you tell them? Um. I would tell my younger self that um, it's all going to be okay. It's all going to be all right. That's good. That's it. That's man. a good one. Yeah. I like you know, that. And that, and that, and that, dude, and that goes, Brady, that, and that goes, that's, that's goes to do with life too, man. It's like, everything's going to be okay. Even when it's not, it's still okay. You know? And I think what you can grasp that as a human man, that like, even in the bad times, it's still all good. You know, it's like, and it may be hard to grasp, but it's, I don't know, man, life's, life's great, man. And even when it's not, it's great, you know, and it's yeah. that's something that happened to me, um, you know, spiritually as a person. And that's, that's what I would tell my young self is that, you know, you're going to be just fine, buddy. You know? Yeah. I like that. All right, everybody, we're going to end it here. Thank you so much, Nate, for coming on the podcast. I really appreciate it. Um, it's been good talking to you. And Thanks, I will see you guys next time. Thanks, Brady. Love you, buddy. Love you.